focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Indian textile industry has a rich, long history that is closely woven into the cultural fabric of the nation. Contributing to 10% of manufacturing production, 2% of India's GDP and up to 13% of the country's export earnings, the industry has been a steady contributor to economic progress. The 22nd Apparel Export Promotion Council's Export Awards 2016-17 were held in New Delhi to pay tribute to this success story and the spirit of innovation demonstrated and fostered within the Indian apparel export industry. These awards recognize the top achievers of the apparel industry across a wide range of key performance indicators and rewarded the best performers. Providing her support to the latest edition of the awards was Union Textiles Minister Smriti Zubinirani, who felicitated exemplary Indian apparel exporters from across the country. We celebrate the achievement of those exporters who have conquered all odds and overcome obstacles to reach unparalleled heights. They have shown grit, determination and vision to show the world that India and Indians, what they can do. The first award for good workplace practices is won by Shahi Exports Private Limited, New Delhi. Congratulations. The top award for environment and sustainability goes to Pratibha Syntex Limited, Madhya Pradesh. In the year 2016-2017, the highest exports to Japan, won by Lodha Impex, Jaipur. The award for highest exports to ASEAN countries goes to Shah Exports Private Limited, New Delhi. Export in woolen garments, won by Silver Spark Apparel Limited, Bengaluru. The highest exports in knitted garments, above 50 crores and up to 100 crores, goes to Danavarshani Exports Private Limited, Tirupur. The highest exports in knitted garments, above 100 crores goes to Eastman Exports Global Clothing Private Limited, Tirupur. The highest global exports from 1 crore to 25 crores goes to RP Net Exports, Export Wing, Lithuania. For the same category goes to Peacock Apparel's Private Limited, Madurai. And the global exports from 1 crore to 25 crores gold award goes to Thoram, Tirupur. The highest global exports above 25 crores and up to 50 crores. The bronze award goes to Maxim's Exports, New Delhi. The silver trophy for the same category goes to Century Apparel's Private Limited, Tirupur. The gold trophy is won by Malcolm India Limited, Kolkata. 
highest global exports from 50 crores to 100 crores. The bronze is won by Jyoti Apparel, New Delhi. And the silver is won by Million Exporter Private Limited, New Delhi. The gold goes to Loyal Textile Mills Limited, Tirupur. The winners of the highest global exports above 100 crores and up to 500 crores. The bronze goes to CTA Apparel Private Limited, Noida. The silver is won by Silver Spark Apparel Limited, Bengaluru. And the winner of the gold, Pratibha Syntex Limited, Madhya Pradesh. And the last category amongst the categories, highest global exports above 500 crores. The bronze goes to Shivalik Prince Limited, Faridabad. The silver goes to Orient Craft Limited, New Delhi. And the winner of the gold trophy in the same category, Shahi Exporters, Private Limited, New Delhi. And bestow the Lifetime Achievement Award on one of the doyans of the Indian apparel industry, Mr. Hari Kapoor, the Managing Director of Messrs. Allied Exports, set up in 1973. The function was great. I must compliment to the chairman, you know, who has arranged such an excellence, where all the ministers, two ministers are there, and Mr. Niti Diok, CEO, is also there, who really represented our industry. My concern is also took up the matter with the minister also, you know, what we want is that before the GST, what was getting the drawbacks, rates, that should be refunded back to us because otherwise the industry will not be able to survive. So I already put up the, uh, with them and I think he's uh, very receptive on that. Both the minister are very receptive and they will take up our matter to save our industry. During the interaction with the ministers, the apparel industry shared its recommendations and also appealed to the government to look at their concerns regarding the recent change in the GST rate. A high-powered panel discussed issues being faced by Indian apparel export industry. Among the issues discussed were complications related to the free trade agreement as well as an ongoing demand of continuing with the old rates of the duty drawback scheme. Members of Parliament assured the exporters by echoing their concerns on and promised quick resolution to the pressing challenges at hand. So before you all joined us here, so we did the Santa in the house. <laughs> we we did uh, a power group roundtable of sorts with industry leaders who are present here today, and I have this huge wish list that has come out of uh, the interaction of industry leaders. And Mr. Prabhu, a lot of them is uh, you know their questions are directed actually towards you. Uh, the biggest one, of course, is on the foreign trade agreements. Uh, can we expect some progress with respect to FTAs, especially with UK, US and EU, the major trading partners uh, of India? In 2018, can we expect some progress on that front? That a growth in Indian economy has to be driven by global trade. And to achieve global trade, there have to be multiple strategies. One, as the entrepreneurs are doing today, they can go and export, they explore the market, they find out that. That's one part. The second part that we are working on, and there is a, just not FTI, I'll tell you that, is to discover new territories, new geographies with new products. Right. And for that, we are doing a market research. That is, market research is not done in Delhi, but in the markets. Okay. And this is not done by some on computers, but on field research. Hmm. So once we are ready with that, then we'll actually help those sectors and those territories to actually move forward with a new vigor. Right. Now, in that context, again, so this is one part of strategy. But secondly, if entrepreneurs, what they are doing, if there is no markets open, how will they do it? There are market barriers in each of the cases. So therefore, bilateral and multilateral both, we need to open markets, particularly for the products that we want to export. So therefore, there is a trade-off. Right. When you talk about FTS, you must always remember as a country, there are always trade-offs. Because there is no country in the world which is going to tell you, please come and export to Absolutely. me. And don't import anything from me. I think I wish to find that country. If you know somebody, please tell me. So then, therefore, we must always have trade-offs in this. So as a industry, 
as a country, we must try to find out how the trade-off will benefit us. Right. That's a good FTA. That we benefit a trade-off in such a way that we get more than we lose in that. So that's what we are working on. I will be very happy to share strategies with you uh, as, as, as a, when we discuss that. And in fact, we have decided that we are creating an SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. For any new FTA to be entered, we must have a huge consultation with uh, all the stakeholders in India so that they lose, they gain and not lose. So let me then invite the market leaders and uh, AEPC representatives here, Mr. Rajani and Mr. Udani, perhaps two quick points from each of you, uh, laying down your wish list to all the key stakeholders here on this platform today. Wish list, ma'am, I'll have to bring my book out then. <laughs> there are two things that we need to look at for us to a, maintain our exports at what they were last year. Because at the rate things are going, that is going to decline. So my first wish and request is that the duty drawback and the ROSL should be immediately reinstated as per the earlier rate till the, 31st, till the 30th of June. By that time, the drawback committee will come out with a composite plan. And secondly, sir, I would like to tell you one thing. Given the fact that we have disadvantages of no FTAs and other, other countries have that advantage. We definitely need some kind of, I don't want to call it subsidy, don't want to call it support, but something the government has to do. Because we need, whatever we are getting today, we need 5 or 7 percent more in some method. We are looking at every part of the textile segment, trying to apply solutions to every part. Right. And hopefully, uh, you know, we will find the solutions in terms of embedded taxes, because that is a solution which will stem out of the GST Council. Let's also talk a little bit about man-made fibers. Uh, and I want to bring in Mr. Kant at this point. So before you all came in, we had some suggestions from industry leaders. And uh, somebody suggested that, uh, can Niti Aayog help in bringing synthetic fabric production in India because 65% of world apparel market is really competing on that. I felt that uh, you know, there's an important point about uh, man-made fibers and I totally agree that, uh, you know, if you talk to big exporters like Li Fung, etc. in Hong Kong, I mean, they'll tell you that India is, uh, cotton is okay, but the world market has changed, it's redefined mm. itself. And therefore, you need to look beyond that. And India needs to do several things on that. And one is really to look at uh, reducing the import tariff on raw materials required to produce man-made fibers. There, I mean, there's, there's something wrong. There's strategically in India's interest. We, are, we have a wrong strategy on uh, import tariffs on raw materials. You want to create jobs, uh, focus on man-made fiber. We need, we need a very focused attention on reduction. And I think we need, a, we need to really consider adopting a fiber-neutral GST rates for man-made, cotton, and silk fibers, all three together. And uh, sir, thirdly, sir, I, I really think, I mean, we'll never get this opportunity when such two, two dynamic, the most dynamic ministers are here. So we need to really, uh, sir, there's also this uh, inverted tax structure for man-made fiber apparel. Under you do GST. realize this is all meant for Arunji. <laughs> no. So I think, sir, we, re we need to reverse the inverted uh, tax structure for man-made fiber apparel under GST. Okay, so let me bring in Mr. Tamta at this point. Uh, uh, sir, supply chains ko uh, safal banane ke liye speed is very important. So, at the state level, governments, kis tarah government manufacturers ke saath milkar uh, speed to market achieve kar sakte hain? Kya initiatives liye ja rahe hain state level pe? Aur uh, states ka vision center se kitna aligned hai? Central ki scheme ke saath saath टेक्सटाइल की अपने अपने स्टेट्स की अलग अलग प्रकार की योजनाएं राज्य चलाते हैं और हर राज्य अपने वहां की सारी सुविधाओं को देखते हुए टेक्सटाइल सेक्टर के अंदर हर राज्य के अंदर चाहे वो ट्रांसपोर्ट सब्सिडी है चाहे वो हाई बिजली से बिजली के बिलों से संबंधित सब्सिडी है या ट्रांसपोर्ट की सब्सिडी है अन्य अन्य प्रकार के हर स्टेट की अपनी परेशानियां और समस्याओं का समाधान करने के लिए राज्य की सरकारें काम करती हैं और ये जरूरी है क्योंकि कई बार विषय हमारे संज्ञान में भी आते हैं क्योंकि हर राज्य के हाइडिल या बिजली की दरें अलग अलग होती हैं उससे जो बने हुए सामान में या गारमेंट्स में वो रेट्स में अलग अलग अंतर आता है ये समस्याएं रहती हैं 
मगर सरकार के माध्यम से हम लोग भी आ, अपने टेक्सटाइल डिपार्टमेंट के माध्यम से हमने बहुत सारी सब्सिडी की योजनाएं बनाई हैं जो समस्याएं हमारे उद्योगपतियों को आती हैं स्टेक होल्डर्स को आती हैं भारत सरकार के माध्यम से भी हम बहुत सारी संसाधन सुविधाओं को देते हैं और राज्य सरकार भी देते हैं All right, so it's time to wrap up. But as we wrap up, I'm going to ask each one of you for one quick progressive step that in 2018 you, as a key stakeholder, will take for the Indian apparel sector. Mr. Udani, can we start with you? I think uh, the time has come for us to really focus on our core skills. Um, you know, of course, while drawback and all. are important we'll have to look beyond we will have to upgrade our technologies we'll have to become more productive and we'll have to try to do more value added garments because we have very skilled artisans available in the country somehow it it's a long laborious path but it's time that we embark on that because i think that we have a a niche in that area hum 2018 mein mannya mantri ji ke margadarshan se is sector ko जो हमारा टारगेट माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी ने किया है यहाँ की जॉब की अपॉर्चुनिटी बढ़े हमारा यहाँ का एक्सपोर्ट ज्यादा बढ़े तो इस दिशा में जो भी हम कदम उठाएंगे माननीय मंत्री जी के मार्गदर्शन में और बहुत अच्छा है कि हमारे साथ आदरणीय प्रभु जी का मार्गदर्शन भी है तो प्रधानमंत्री जी के साथ मिलकर के इस सेक्टर को बढ़ाने का हम एक नया अध्याय जोड़ेंगे दो में मिस्टर प्रभु इनफैक्ट the days ahead are going to be extremely competitive and therefore we can export only what we make so therefore what we make has to be sold so therefore we must upgrade what we make as i fully correctly said at the same time the job of the government and which we are trying to do it now more aggressively is to open up new markets help the exporters to create an umbrella organization where we can promote business promote trade make as many deals as possible so that we provide them a support whereby the army can move in as you say that the entrepreneurs can move in firstly uh, in the textiles india 2017 there was a promise that across countries wherever we have any kind of new technology because knowledge flow is very essential with emerging technologies uh, and technology transfer is also another issue on which the entire industry is very gung ho so there has been an assurance given and work done on the fact that there has to be a knowledge system created created where irrespective whether it's natural fiber or man made fiber whatever the new technologies whatever the new potential areas that we will explore together between the industry and two three ministries we've already uh, established that group and that work is underway okay. we will do a big shot in the arm for silk Okay. we'll definitely we are already working on something for jute so there is another promise that i will keep up and uh, fulfill in 2018 uh, god willing for the jute sector uh, skills is a big part of the textile yes. business and uh, we are blessed that we have two components of skill which is again uh, reflective of the diversity of textile one in the formal sector where the apparel industry has done stupendously well uh, between apparel and made ups we've had skilling and 72% placement Uh, of people mm. so that is something that the government seeks to strengthen but we also have a rich legacy of artisans and weavers and they need upskilling with market knowledge they need upskilling with soft skills like use and access to a computer or for that matter spoken english or how to bill and present and box up their items now those is, uh, are details on which the government is also working mr kant uh, you know so this uh, industry will not only survive it will grow it will flourish it will expand and it will continue to progress and penetrate global markets uh, you know uh, this is a very responsive government and the the day they met uh, the textile and the commerce minister the very next day 2% was announced we'll continue to take a series of measures to make it a highly competitive industry so that this continues to grow and and progress and expand and penetrate markets abroad thank you thank you very much panelists i think the way the niti aayog chairman mr vitak pan has supported us i think we can see some support may come from the government and this is a great moment for us i think publicly it is quite well acknowledged by him today is a day when we must acknowledge a debt of gratitude to all who have really done wonders i must say that many people have contributed 
to the making of this industry. And time is so short that I may not be able to acknowledge that, that individually. Please pardon me for any such omission, which is completely because of time constraint. Thank you. Working steadfastly in integrating the entire textile industry, starting at the grassroots level, AEPC has focused on training and upskilling the workforce and supplying a steady stream of manpower to the industry. The ceremony culminated with the pledge to strengthen Indian exports each year to improve its skills and proficiency by providing superior solutions to international buyers for their garment imports.